All right, everybody. We got uh, some really, really, really exciting news. So I was talking to one of my martial arts brothers, and um, we decided to uh, start interviewing some of the best fighters all around Houston, uh, all around the state of Texas, and we decided to bring a podcast back. This is going to give a voice to a lot of fighters out there. Um, it's going to give a voice and a platform for everybody to talk about their experience and also for us to share some of their insights and knowledge into what they're thinking, how they're doing it, how they're winning, how they're feeling, and what really goes on in the head of a fighter, right? So um, I'm really happy uh, that uh, we have a really great episode coming for you, an amazing podcast. Uh, so we got YG Fight Fitness, that's Young Gun Fight Fitness here uh, with Coach Troy, and we got, we got uh, 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 Zacchaeus here, Zacchaeus Kennedy. And this guy has had five, he's knocked out, he's been in street beefs and he's knocked out five of his competitors in a fight. So this is like super exciting, really amazing. And let's kick this off. Let's go. What's up, Sifu? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. All right, Zach, can you hear us? There we go. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, Sifu, I'm, I'm excited that we're doing this. You know, we, we've been talking about it now for almost a month. It, it hasn't been that long. Yeah. That we've been talking about it. When I, when I looked at your YouTube and I seen it, you had already did a podcast. I'm like, man, we got to do this again, but we got to bring on some state fighters and some local fighters. Right. The right. first person that popped into my head was Zach. OK, because since the year 2022, I had discovered the brother. He was he, he was uh, he had content all the time you know there's content creators like a uh, fight content creator martial art content creators you'll see stuff every now and again and it doesn't mean that they're not training but it, you don't see it every day multiple oh, yeah. times a day it's new con I, maybe you might have even lost track of some of the stuff that you putting up it's always something right I, yeah i probably got like two thousand videos hey, probably two thousand because it's always zach, something new zach you don't know man you don't know Coach Troy, young gun over here, has been doing nothing but talking about you. You don't know. You don't know. He's being humble about it. He's like, you don't know. I already got the first fighter, pick, the first, uh, fighter picked out. We got to have Zach in here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, let's do it. Like, like I'm pumped just to be sitting here with you. Like, I'm, I'm jacked. I'm pumped. No, I appreciate you know? it, Lyle. No, I appreciate I was in there, though. Thank you. Yeah, man. And, and, and you know what it is? It's, 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 I'm going to say this, and then what we're going to do is we're going to play a highlight reel, okay? Of, of of some of you know Zach's best moments in Street Beef. There may be more that we missed out on. We can always do this a second time, right? But yeah. but but some of the best moments of, of a few fights. Now I'm gonna say this: the reason why is because you get elements of Alexander Shlomenko, you know, elements of Peter Yan, you know, elements of pressure, patience, and just cracking people on the chin. I don't think that any fight fan would disagree when they say that that's the favorite style we can all agree that lay and pray too much footwork moving around all the time run away from the fight from a from a fan's perception would mm -hmm. be the least favorite style right yep. but that pressure style i mean is something that that we all have to see so for the sake of a great introduction okay we're gonna kick this thing off with a highlight reel that i had the honor of putting together i hope that everybody enjoys it I'm gonna bring this thing in. We'll get right to it. We'll come back with that.
Man. That was a great one. Zach, you're that was a good Zach, one. you're a monster. <laughs> you're a beast. I told you're you, people. Beast. You're telling me. Look, these guys are going out cold. Dude, these guys are dropping like flies. You know, most of I them like, quit. Most of them quit. You know, uh, in the second I, round. They're taller opponents. They're taller opponents. What I like about your fighting style, see, that's the first time I've seen the video too. I wanted to save it. You finished it a while ago. I'm like, I gotta save it to watch it live with you. You're so calm. You're super calm. I like your guard. I like your stance. You're calm. And no matter how much they're moving, you just stay right in front of them. That's it seems like you're just standing right in front of them and you're calm about it. And uh, I love that. I love that. So you're telling me that in your fights, how many fights have you had? Let's just start there. How many fights have you had? Uh, in Street Beasts, I had five. Five fights. Five yeah. fights. Five fights. And you, you got a KO uh, in all your fights. Yeah. Well, if you call them quitting, that's part of Check a KO, too. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. They right. quit, too. Yeah. For sure. For sure. For sure. And uh, all right. So let's talk about this. Before we had a little pre-interview, just for everybody who uh, hasn't watched right now, you were telling me something about Texas, where there's a law in Texas where we're able to do this. Yeah. Can you go ahead and say that again. What's that? Uh, mutual, uh, mutual combat. So basically, two gentlemen or two women can actually agree to fight and not get in trouble. <laughs> literally can't be stopped. You can literally fight in Houston, anywhere. You like in Texas, you can literally say, "Hey, man, we got we got some disagree. Let's fight." Mutual combat, and ain't nothing that can happen. Nobody can call the police, and you don't have to do nothing. They gonna just let you fight it out. I love that. I love that. So, Zach, I already got a bunch of questions for you, right? So, first one is: Is this how'd you get involved in street beefs? Number one, and is street beefs? Is there like a champion of street beefs? Yep. Is there like is this like a uh, do you, do you see this as like uh, like uh, something where you get your own like belt? Is it like its own league category type of thing? Can you, can you jump into those some of those yeah. questions? Yeah. So how I first got into street beefs, I was uh, promoting for Jupiter Kickboxing. We needed uh, some members for a new gym, so that's why I was like, okay, we'll just do street beefs because they come to Dallas and then they got what two three point three million followers. I'm like, that's easy. If I can give me a knockout my first fight. I mean, I can get at least 40 uh, students coming to Street Beefs and putting them on, uh, I mean, coming to Jupiter Kickboxing and putting them on the map. You know what I mean? So that's where that came from. And do Street Beefs have champions? Yeah, they have champions. Um, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and MMA. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So with that, uh, when, was your, when was your last fight? Do you plan to fight again? Oh, my last fight was actually two weeks ago, 12 days ago. 12 days ago. Yeah, we're coming. Uh, Street Beast coming back to Dallas. Uh, it's going to be a gym war. So this is going to be all the gyms in Dallas that's going to meet up and uh, fight for Street Beast. So right, I will so be coming back to that. I'm going to hand the mic over to Young Gun. But before I do, I have a real quick question. Do you, and Now, this might sound stupid. So just for all the people who don't know or the people who are watching this, because we're going to send this out to a lot of people, is that mm -hmm. um, do you have to have beef with somebody on Street Beast? Do you pick your fights? Do that's you weigh question. in? Like No. Like, Okay, okay, so you uh you don't pick your fights. They're random. You don't know who your opponents be. You can't have street. Uh, you can't have beef. It, it's it's better if you did because you can you can you basically have an endless round until one person quits. Um, and the weight classes. Um, uh, it just depends. Uh, street beef, dirty south is getting a little more stricter on the weight classes since I brought it up the last the last fight because uh when I went when I came in at 143 pounds. The 135ers look bigger than me, and I said something about it. Right, I'm in, right, I'm right, in the right, ring. Right. I say all the 130s taller than me and bigger than me, and I know I'm, 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 hey, I ain't no small man. I got muscle and everything, but these guys are way bigger than me. Do they really weigh 135? So they said next time they're gonna bring in two scales, and you got to step on both scales, and whatever the, uh, whatever your average is, you'll be fighting at that weight class. Right. I mean, you can't have a heavyweight fighter versus a flyweight fighter. I mean, it, yeah, it, true. It, it just it's it just it changes the dynamics. Yeah, it changes most the definitely that. And I just didn't like like all the one thirty five was bigger than me. So and I'm pretty good. I got a master trainer certification with IAS. I know weight classes. I know right. body types. You know what I mean? Right. Like I was like, nah, they can't be one thirty five. What what got you into fighting? Uh, what got me into fighting was um uh, my first YouTube video uh, on fifty two blocks. Okay. That was when I first seen that. I was like, "Oh man, that's a that's a nice martial arts," and it was made by African Americans. I say, "Let me let me learn this and see what I can do with it." And from then on, I took those principles as consistent training and just adapting that style into an MMA version of it. 
So did you learn the 52 block system? I mean, these guys, the 52 blocks, everybody who's watching who hasn't seen these guys, they got some really great skill. I've seen, yeah. I love, I love their guards. They got guards like this. They got guards like this. They got all sorts of different guards that I don't typically see, and they do it really, really well. So did you learn that system? Yeah, I learned the things that worked in MMA or in boxing. In I boxing. took, yeah, some of them was unnecessary. You didn't need all those guards. So I took the ones that came, that I seen uh, other boxers use as far as cross guard, as far as uh, conventional block blocking and parries and everything else at that, at that. I took what worked for me, basically. Like, I like leverage blocking like, um, like George Foreman, right, 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 right. And right, I like right, skulling. I like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, where he's yeah, playing yeah. with the hands. I like skulling crossbone because it's easier for MMA to me to parry and elbow down. And once I elbow down, I can throw in the underhook, and then from there, ear rip like Randy Couture. So I always make up. I always try to incorporate everything into my game as far as the greats did. I love that. I have one more question. I'm sorry, man. I'm excited. Yeah. So last question is is do see i thought street beefs or was more like i was under the impression that a lot of it was street fighting once i found out you were part of jupiter kickboxing i was surprised you know because number one i've seen a lot of street beef fights but just because of the name i was like oh, okay you know maybe these are dudes who just got some beef and they're they're, they're fighting it out but there are some legit fighters there who got mm -hmm. some legit skill right yep Okay. There's legit, like there's some pretty legit guys there, um, especially in my in the South category as well. So if you say out of a hundred people that pull up, right, you might get twenty that are actually legit. The rest just want to test themselves and see where they're at. But there's actually twenty legit guys there that are pretty, are pretty above average. Okay, very good. That's the odds. That's what I I seen for myself. Just watching right, right. people shadow box, watching all the fights. Out of a hundred guys that pulled up last time, there was literally twenty that would have probably gave me problems. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you this, man. Um, I have an immense amount of respect for your body of work. I mean, that's clearly what it is. You know, for me as a martial artist, if I see, if I see martial arts done at a level, right, where it's high level, I don't care what organization is tied to, what brand is tied to. I don't care how many belts you have. I don't care if you got a weeble wobble record. You know, those guys with records like uh, uh, <laughs> three wins and 114 losses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To me, no. <laughs> that doesn't tell the story of the fighter. You know, the only way to really tell the story of a fighter, I believe, is to talk to the fighter. Because no. people, right. pe what I realized when I started competing is that people see the fight but they don't see the training camps. They don't see the injuries. They don't see the families. They don't see the drama. So it's almost like a microwave event because it's like you a, a fight is announced and then two weeks later or a month later, the fight happens, right? What advice would you give to a young fighter, not even age, just, just getting into fighting on staying consistent with training? Because that's really important. The stuff people don't see. So consistency is my my number one thing. If you have to train every day, because if your opponent take a day off, you don't take that day off. You'll get you'll get ahead of him. If he takes two days off, you don't take those days off. You'll keep getting ahead and ahead. You just because consistency beats talent. Consistency beats athleticism. The volume, the sure volume that you train will beat the guys that don't train as much. Now, I mean, not train like you crazy, but train smart as far as me. I got my strength and conditioning. I have my balance day. I have my stability today. I have my ultimate strength day. I have my fighting day. I use those. I keep constantly working and working and working to keep me ahead of the game. If that makes any sense, you know, some people go to sleep tired. Okay, go to sleep tired. Cool. I'll go to sleep, wake up early, and then hit the gym. I'll hit the gym three times a day, in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. I just, the consistency beats everything it's just i don't know how to explain it's like no, a trade. it's like a tradesman you know what i mean the bet the more you do your trade the better you get at it does that make sense yep yep zach you're, yep. you're i mean it makes perfect sense man you're, like, you're, you're, it makes perfect sense you're like great. consistency i can't i cannot stress this enough with people it's being consistent people say oh i don't look good stay consistent trust me that look right. good will turn it'll turn into what is what's good right. so how many days a week are you training now like seven so days Okay, so you're at Jupiter Kick. So we, so somebody can find you at Jupiter Kickbox. Yeah, uh, just about any day of the week. Any day of the week. Okay. What, what, what do you do at Jupiter Kickboxing? I don't know. 
you doing a lot of sparring every day? You working a lot of drills? Yeah, doing... uh, it's uh, I don't use I don't do lead, uh, do drills. Uh, I do a lot of sparring. That's that's number one. What makes Jupiter kickboxing really good? We spar every day. It's not really heavy. Just depends on the emotions that day. Uh, but it's usually just sparring every day. They do drills, but I don't participate in drills. I just participate in the fighting aspect. So I got one last. So I got a question for you about this on this subject. A lot of people are talking about hard sparring, light sparring, technical sparring. And there's a lot of new media coming out, new fight signs coming out saying, you know, doing a bunch of hard sparring every day is not really we'll good kill for the brain. It's not yeah. good for you. You know, you got to do that maybe before a fight. So let's talk about your sparring routine. Like, how do you work? What type of partners do you got? And, and you know, what uh, light, heavy, technical, what do you do? Yeah. So uh, we got a, a variety of everything. Uh, we got heavyweights that are pretty technical, fast. Uh, we got middleweights, welterweights. I'm actually, me and Charles are actually the one of the smallest guys there. Um Charles weighing 145 pounds. I'm weighing 160, depending if we got a fight or not. Uh, we're the smallest. And each guy has his own different style. Like, we got Keeson that's pretty strong. So his clinch game is uh, pretty pretty legit. So if he clinches you, you're going to have to you're gonna have a strength battle between him. So we got Fabian that has – he's a heavyweight, but he has long reach and a lot of stamina and endurance for a heavyweight. Basically, uh, I like to call him uh, Tyson Fury, basically. Um, really technical with the hands, an awkward style but knows how to keep going at 70% for 12 rounds straight. Then we got Ricky, extremely athletic brother uh, that has great kicks, great combinations. Uh, he stays on the outside for a heavyweight. He stays on the outside using his movements. Uh, we just got a, a variety of things as far as how heavy, how hard we go in sparring. It just depends. Um, just depends on how hard I get hit. If you hit me hard, then I'm like, okay, well, that might have been a fluke. Let me, let me see if he do it again. Boom. Oh, he hit me hard. Okay. He <laughs> want one of them battles. He want one of them. He want, he want that warrior. Okay, cool. Let's do he that. Want a for gym a war. <laughs> yeah. That's what it just depends on how hard I get hit. Honestly, if you, if yeah. I feel like you want some, some action, I just meet that energy. So if the energy is not there right. to, to go in heavy, then I'll be like, okay, well, we doing some technical stuff. Okay. Well, it's far away. We might be doing some, some drilling a little bit. Uh, then it's just, Oh, now nah, he hit me to a tour. I got to get this guy out. So it just depends on the energy. But everybody got a mutual understanding of that. Um, everybody friends. So nobody, it doesn't really happen too often that it gets too out of hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned something in the beginning, you know, and you had mentioned it to me in the conversations leading up to this. Right. And for me, I have to know, you know, my background. Sifu knows my background. I have to know this. Why was it important? Here we are in February. This is Black History Month, right? Why was it so important for you to take, to become a student of a, of a system or a style that was created by African-Americans, i.e. Black folks? Like, why was that so important? Because remember, right? You could have went with anything. Why I was that have, so important right. for you? Because it was, uh, uh, it was made under... Uh, that's a hard one. Dang, I never thought about it like that. But it was it was a brother like Burley. Like for some parent reason, can ask my wife. The way he talked, the way he trained, the consistency, the the life he's been through to what he is now, changed the perspective of you can start at the bottom and give all these conditions that make you pretty much and put you still at the bottom and make it hard for you to even get to the top. But with the work and the work rate and the consistency to pass those up and not make excuses, but try to find plans to beat them was the 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 whole thing especially this uh 52 coming out of jail and then coming back to the streets i wanted to see that this was a style that we know black people made uh we know that it came from a system of black people and we know we need to pass it down so that was my whole thinking of it like oh damn that's that's modern that's modern where you can actually find the roots for and then hey let's take it and run with it let's see what happens yeah, I think that the history of martial arts is not told worldwide, yeah. right? It's very limited at, yeah. in the history of every single nation, every single culture of people, no matter their heritage, nationality, or race, they have had a system of martial arts. You will not find the people that didn't have a system of martial arts, right? But yeah. it benefits the industry to tell it from certain points of view, right? One of the things for me that 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 just blows my mind, okay, when you fight, 
I've been dying to ask this, okay? You talk to the people that you're fighting to. And you're not, it, it's not, people, you gotta understand this. It's not like talking like, hey, how you doing today? Hey, you having a nice day? It's like you're fighting, Um, I want to say it was Pope. Yeah, Pope. And, and it was, a, it was I, I can't forget this. It was, it was a point where you, you fainted and he went up against the cage like this. And balled up. And you say, I'm not going to hit you. Here's the reason why this is uh, 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 fascinates me. It takes a lot of awareness, right, to even notice that your opponent is in a defensive position. How many times have we watched the UFC or Glory or watch one of these and someone would get hurt and we see them stumble, but the other person keeps plugging along like they were never hurt. So not only are you talking, you noticed he was hurt. You had restraint not to hit him, okay? And then you told him at the same time, okay? Now, this is a two-part question, right? Because I want to give you some, I want to play the devil's advocate here. There are some gyms that would not allow that. There are some trainers who would disown you as a student. I'm serious, right? We know this. You yeah. know, even at the highest level, what is it that brings that out of you and makes you talk to your opponent while you're, you're fighting? So it's a personality thing, right? I change personalities when I do fight. So you got normal Zacchaeus, right? When I'm I'm pretty much calm and collective and my parents taught me right. But when I get ready to fight, that whole thing goes out. I can be the bad guy. I can be the, the energy in the room. I can be that party guy. I can be somebody else for a little bit, for three rounds, four rounds, five rounds, however rounds it may be, I can be that other guy, right? So it's just when I talk to people, I like to see their insecurities. I like to see their fears. What brings them out? Most men don't like to get embarrassed. Most men don't know how to handle pressure. Most men don't know how to deal with certain things. They don't know how to deal with their emotions. So I use that to see what's deep inside you. Even if you don't talk back, I know something in there and I'm looking for it. And eventually the body language should tell me the energy off your body, your body position, the tensity in your muscles. I look for every single thing that is because the first thing about a fighter is physically we train every day. Physically, we can lift weights. We can run fast. Physically, we can do all these things. Right. But at the end of the day, it's a mental thing. And I need to get inside their head and see what's clicking, what's ticking in there. What's what you thinking? I need to see it. And when I when I talk to them, I look at the eyes. I look at the body language. I look if they actually listen. If they smile, oh, you in trouble. I'm in there. And then I just start planting my, my, my subconscious inside the head, in the back, dancing, dancing on that nerve, just knowing that something can happen. I can't. I, and then eventually I start, they start wearing down. They're starting doing this. They're starting doing that. And I'm still talking to him. How I talked to him was I knew he was tired. I knew he was beaten. And I wanted to bring that out to him. I wanted him to let him know that you beaten. I know you beaten. So when I when I faint and he went down, he did the right things. I couldn't hit him. That's true enough. I didn't have any combination to get through his guard. I didn't see anything that I could punch him with. So that was true. I didn't actually I, I'm not going to hit you because there's nothing to hit you with that will actually stun you in that that position, especially when you tucked in like this. I can go to the body, but I'm just wasting energy. It ain't going to hurt you. I'm going to wait till you come up again because I know a flush shot to the head while you're standing up is more efficient than while you crouch down. And that's just from experience. But that's why I talk to people. That's why I mentally try to break people, because I need that's the easiest to do, especially with fighters. If you ever met a fighter, them, some of them do so extreme. Not most, not some. All of them. They're extremely emotional, no matter who they are. They might have no matter who they are. I, 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 I seen it for myself. Uh, a simple joke can go out of out of contents and they get mad. Well, when you get mad, you get countered. You know what I mean? Or you can be overconfident. And I can pick you up and slam you on your body and then tell you, you really ain't got nothing. In your head, you thought you was the best in the gym. Now somebody that's better than you telling you that you ain't good. That vent, that that brings you down physically and mentally. So these, these are just tactics I learned over the, over the years just sparring, knowing that most people don't know how to take an opponent that can actually fight and talk to them at the same time. I say, I tell, usually I tell people if I'm quiet, that's a problem. You know what I mean? That's that's mean I'm trying to actually get you kill you. I'm actually trying to kill you at this point. I'm going 100 percent. I shut off the whole mental thing. Now I'm putting it all into skills. So it just really it really depends on the person. But say for a fact, it's just the mentality. If you ever watch the old boxes, watch old people. Watch, just watch the old time when they fought. 
uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and Brother Duran, the first fight, Sugar Ray Leonard had so much anger in him for no reason. He didn't know Brother Duran, but he Brother Duran was talking to him, mocking him in a different language, bro. Like, Brother Duran don't speak no English. And you getting mad because this dude's saying something in Spanish? What, what where's the anger? Like, where's the animosity at? Like, if he's speaking Spanish, you shouldn't even get mad because you're like, I can't understand nothing he's saying. But you you got mad and went to a fight with a brawler, like with a no, he's not a brawler, a technical puncher. Mm -hmm. You never Roberto, do that. Roberto, let me just say this. Roberto Duran is one scary dude. Yeah. Roberto and, Duran has got like hands of stone. Guys. Yeah, and you don't you don't go to that. You like you use footwork, you use slips, feints. You don't walk into you don't walk into a man that's known to hit you and knock you out. Why do that? But he had he wanted to prove to himself that he can beat the bad guy. But you couldn't beat the bad guy because the bad guy mentally already beat you. Yeah, and that's the thing. You got to beat the person using your game, not theirs. If you're True. using somebody else's game, again. You're already losing. I always refer to like being a snake charmer, right? Mm -hmm. Now, once the snake far starts following the flute, now I got you because you're following what I do. Yeah. Now, if you're following what I do, you're not doing what you do. And that's, Max. that's exactly what I want because now I'm like, perfect. You're listening to my body. You're listening to what I got to do. This is great. That's yeah, that is, You're controlling the fight. It's easy that way. I mean, tell you the truth, once you control a fight, your, your stress levels go down. you like, oh, man, this is – this is easy. He's keep going this way. Cool. Just I'm not even going to tell you to stop. And I might tell you to stop and see if you stop. You probably won't. So <laughs> in Jupiter kickboxing, do you guys have matches? Do you do like – so let me ask. Do you do any other tournaments? Are you doing like the Texas Muay Thai champion? Do you do MMA? Like, no. Uh, tell me about this, that. This year I will be doing MMA uh, for Fury MMA for my gym. Fury. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. I'll be doing that this year. Um Got to, I'm gonna cut down to 125. I'm gonna go ahead and get it out the books. They keep asking me to do it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it for that. Now, one. When, 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 when about when about is that fight gonna be taking place? Uh, let me ask. The, I gotta ask my color. I gotta ask Ernest and see what he say. I can make the weight because I'm right now. I'm at 145, so I can make weight. I couldn't promise him last time. Like last year, I couldn't promise him I can make 125. I was 160, like, and I was 160 with a bad diet, still buff, right, but right, just. Right. I knew I wouldn't go. I, I, I'll be lying to him and tell him, oh, yeah, I can make the weight. And Why then not? I know. You were stacked. You were stacked. Shoulders, neck. Yeah. Like, I was, I was, I was Jeez, jacked up. I remember. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And then you, the, the transformation is actually something, man, because, see, what, 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 what fascinates me, you know, is martial arts. But what really gets me excited is to see the discipline, right? Because martial arts makes you honest. I forgot who said it, but they were talking about the sport of boxing, right? And they say, look, boxing is one of those sports where you can't lie. If you had five pieces of birthday cake a week ago, and it you shows. Get the ring, it's going to show. You yep. know, if you've been out partying and, 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 you know, shaking a tail feather all week, it's going to show. show. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I've always been very honest with myself. Very yeah, honest. I couldn't, like, yeah, I, I couldn't lie to him. And he ain't yeah. the type of guy to lie to because, yeah. oh, man, bro, he got that Marine personality, bro. Mm -hmm. That drill sergeant personality. You lie to him. Wait, I got to point this way. Maybe hey, you better walk. Seafood. You better run. Cause, seafood personality hey, too. Because <laughs> if he, if 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 you step on that scale and you don't make way, all you gonna hear is him cussing, fussing, and Berating saying you, you ain't. Oh, oh, bro, it's bad. And it's in a group. He gonna do it in front of a group of people. He don't. Oh he don't give man. It. So I couldn't. I, I was gonna like, nah, I ain't for the promise this guy. I'm gonna do it last year because I'm at 160, and if I don't make 125. He ain't gonna let this go. So, so do you? You guys do so in Jupiter. You do kickboxing, Muay Thai. We do, yeah, and kickboxing. MMA. Uh, yeah, we do everything. Yeah. Okay, so you competed in in what in uh, MMA? Uh, MMA, uh, kickboxing, and uh, boxing. And boxing. Yeah. Okay. okay. I and prefer MMA? boxing because I like to keep myself like at a disadvantage. Because if I do mm -hmm. MMA, it's that's that's easy. I'm just gonna double leg you and just wrestle you down. That's about it. But in boxing, I can't hardly do that. Right. There's so the restrictions. They, you were telling us before we came on here, before we started recording, that you were a Greco-Roman wrestler. You did some Greco-Roman yeah. wrestling. I did some wrestling. Sport. Yeah. I did some wrestling, uh, folk style, freestyle, and Greco. Yeah. Okay. So did that help when you started learning jiu-jitsu? Are you learning jiu-jitsu? Uh, I am learning jiu-jitsu. Uh, I'm not – I don't like – yeah, I'm learning jiu-jitsu, right? But I don't like the learning style. I think that's probably – because I usually train by myself. So I'm extremely selfish when it comes to it. Like if you're not doing a certain system that I like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show up. 
especially for 150 150 dollars a month right you know what i mean it's extremely expensive and then i just don't like how they teach i prefer to just roll and work on my system but i know you can't learn jujitsu that way you know what i mean you'll learn your jujitsu but you won't learn it like the full system does that make sense yeah yeah of course I'm the so same yeah, way I d- when it comes to striking. So if the yeah. striking is not, you know, where it should be, I can't grappling. I don't know. So you can catch me up. You can you can catch me with some bullshito with the grappling. Yeah. <laughs> no, I but uh, you, but when exactly, uh, as, I want to ask you something, up? man. You you do some very unorthodox training. Mm-hmm. Very unorthodox training. I've seen you use water stabilizers. I've seen you use medicine balls while holding water stabilizers. I yep. think I've even seen you use just big ass water bottles, you know, yep. the big jugs, right? Yeah. You know, um, what where did you get this from? Like, well, like uh, it reminds me, and, and and I could be right on point because my next question is gonna be tied into this. It reminds me of like some old school Russian stuff, man. Yeah, that's why I learned it from. Uh, okay, so yeah. uh, it was from a Soviet video on YouTube. So they was doing a lot of um, stability training, but stability strength. They the whole principle was the movement of the water uh, manipulated like body, like the body, a human body movement. So how do you get that? You just get put get some weight, put some water in it, and it'll shift back and forth. This tells the brain, so when you're actually grappling with somebody, you can feel them going left. You can feel them going right. It's, and then, then your body learns how to stop that movement. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So it it's like a nervous system thing. It's like a passive ability. All my workouts gives me passive abilities as far as balance, as far as uh, controlling an unstable weight as far as when I close my eyes, I can literally feel you go left to right and I still can hit the move that I need to get to get to you, to get to your legs or to even, you know, pick you up and drop you on your head. It just, it, that, that's all it does. This is like a passive ability on top of the, on top of the strength training that what you've seen was the, uh, the passive abilities I'm working on, but there's two types of abilities. You got passive and you got those active abilities. I guess you can call it hard abilities like welding, and you can call it soft abilities like communication and typing. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And how, how long have you been fighting for now, Zach? How long have you been fighting? How long have you been doing martial arts? How about that? I've been competing probably. I started at 20 when Zoe was born, my daughter, my oldest daughter. But I've been doing martial arts all the way till I was six. So it's been a part of your life, your whole life? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you were competitive when you were wrestling as well? Yeah. So that that competition spirit has always it's there. Yeah, I, I, it, it keeps me. It, it makes me stay calm. I'm 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 good under pressure. It doesn't matter. I still smile under pressure. It just gets you ready for pressure, like not being nervous, not being intimidated, stuff like that. All right. So Zach's outside the ring. The cage is there. You're about to go into a fight. You you got two minutes. Your fight is up next. Yeah. You're ready to go up. Yeah. Your showtime, what's going on in your head? How are you feeling? What's going on with the butterflies? What's going on no, but, with the no. game? This, yeah. this, so, like, there's times where, like, right so right before a fight, I have all this preparation. You've done all this work. And all of a sudden, I hear everybody yelling. You step into a ring. And then, for me, everything just goes silent. Once I go in the ring, I'm there. And it just, like, everything else just quiet. I think the only thing I think would be nervous is – before the fight, I don't know why, but I'd be like, I have to take a mean shit. That's right. that's before. I don't know why. And then usually I don't. It's just for some apparent reason, I, that's, that's the nervous I get. That's the feel I get. And then when I get in the fight, everything goes away. I don't know. I'm not I'm not thinking of nothing. It's not silent. It's of happiness and bliss. But that's me turning into Zach. Right. That's me turning putting my new personality on well my i still it's, it's a personality thing but that's my my person my fighting personality comes out and that's when i start i'm smiling i'm happy and i'm so they, they have this they have this thing right so before battle this is true this is really true this is written by navy seals and combat veterans so before you go into battle your body starts going through changes and a lot of times like there's been a lot of marines a lot of police officers and a lot of navy seals um uh, where, but before they would go into actual combat, their body would actually make them take a dump. Because if you were to ever get wounded or hurt, um, it, it, it's, it's actually uh, releasing everything from your body. And I'm not kidding you. It's called, in the fight world, this is true, it's called a battle crap. I swear to God. 
You can look it up. It's real no, I believe. historical. So it's called the battle. Crash. Look, he know he ain't, no, you ain't, he ain't got to look it up because it happens to him. Yeah, it happens to me all the time. I'm like, well, so I, 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 I got this, and I, and I, I I don't eat the next day. I'm like, I ain't gonna yeah. eat because I know it's gonna happen. And then when I get in there, damn, I'm crowning. Fuck, I gotta go. Uh, let me find a let me go find a porta potty. You know what I mean? Like, let me go find a damn porta potty. Get this shit out. Oh man! All right. So that with that, classic. so that was that was part one, part two of what you said is a different personality, Zach, the real Zach. Let's hear about that guy. Because when we were doing a little pregame interview, you were telling me that that's not an angry guy, right? And we were talking about how anger makes you lose fights. We were talking yeah. about, what well, we were talking about, just for all the viewers listening, is I recently watched the George Foreman uh, 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 movie, like documentary of his life. I recommend it for everybody. If you haven't seen it, like his history is here in Houston. His gym is here in Houston. Like, he still has his church and his community center. Like, I want to go. It's amazing, right? So it's all about Houston. I live here. And it's also about Texas, which is great as well. George Foreman, when he was younger, he was always putting on that mean facade, like that tough guy facade. After he found God, after that fight with Ali, he found God. And he decided to use, like, his, his – he was a family man. And he decided to use love and his heart and helping the children in the community. And he became a better fighter when he had love and compassion – and, and goodness in his heart rather than the anger, right? So for me, I think as a martial artist who's been doing it for a long time, this, this is a higher level of intelligence of fighting. Mm -hmm. This is a higher mm -hmm. fight yeah. IQ. Yeah. Fighters who just get angry all the time, I see it as very immature. In my opinion, I just see it as maybe you don't have enough experience or maybe no, you have something – something's really going on in your world. Maybe you were abused. I mean, maybe you have something that you need to work on, right? Because that's not what I see as fighting. I see maybe you're fighting a demon inside you rather than your opponent, right? So you're, we're talking about you, Zach. This is all about you. But I just want to get that out there for the podcast. You say you smile. You're talking trash. It looks like you're having fun. Let's talk about that guy in the fight. Uh, so with that, my, my fighting personality, yes. I, I don't get angry. I'm not angry. I'm extremely happy. I'm extremely loose. And I'm extremely funny. Uh, I, I took personalities from other people in my life. That would be my, my, my dad, uh, Torrance Lilly, my mom. I took those jokes that they always talked about and a couple of my cousins, just random people that was funny to me. And I put the, the good traits, the fun traits, all into one guy So when I fight. And... That's why I be getting so many stoppages or knockouts. And when I land, I land with intensity because I'm extremely relaxed. You know what I mean? It's like, hmm, what I like. It's not a triple G. I wouldn't say it was a triple G. Triple G is more on a psychopath level. Uh, <laughs> this is more like, um, I don't know what to call it. More like a mixture of Muhammad Ali uh, with patience. Um, instead of going backwards, I go forward. It's easier that way. Uh, but yeah, that's it's 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 a mental game. I, I like to stay calm because when you're too tense, especially you you lose endurance. And when I'm training, I'm usually not tense. You know what I mean? When I'm training, I'm always relaxed. So if I can find a state of relax relaxation, I can, I can win. I can win the fight. I think the only times where I have a hard time is when I'm when I when I when I get pressured or when I'm starting to fight and, it, and the guy's actually getting to me, I'll start turning to back to my normal self, the technical guy. But I go off of emotion. I might tense up in a certain position or I might uh, I might tense up in a certain position and lose power. So I I, I want to stay my, with my per fighting personality as much as possible. Does that make sense? It does. Because I'm looking to have fun. I think I think since I've been coming up in this martial arts game, I run into a lot of people that have like mental issues, something inside them. They fight. And I know it. I know. it. And I want to get in there and I want to find it out. I want to bring that shit out of you. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's, it's, it's wrong to say it like that, but it's like it's fun because I know what is he what is going on in that head. And I figure it out easy. I mean, when I spar like you can as uh, Charles, I, I, I find some in my sparring partners. I find even at a uh, uh, level A uh, in San Antonio at my new gym, uh, level up MMA. Ask Ernest, man. I spar and I find out what you're not good at. I find out what you're really scared of. Last time I sparred, I sparred a, a lady. Uh, I mentally broke her twice when I first met her, and then when I sparred, when I grappled with her, when I first grappled with her, uh, I said, um, 
she was she was being approached by the coaches like she they favorites. So I'm like, cool. I know what I'm gonna say to her when I grapple her because she's pretty good. So I'm grappling her and I get side control. Well, I grab by her ear and say, "Fuck your sensei," and mm. she got oh she broke instantly mm-hmm. broke. Gave up the submission, arm bar and all, baby. I took it. Oh, cool. So I got I leave. She I, she didn't she didn't make a scene. But when I got to the when I when we left, coach approached me. He was like, man. Uh, she told me that you told me to fuck, fuck myself. I'm like, she told you that? That's the part. You don't, she don't tell you no shit like that, man. You like 50 years old. You don't, you don't, you don't tell people that. Like, I'm bullshitting. He was like, yeah, I know you bullshitting, bro. He was like, I know you bullshitting. When you first came in here, you mentally broke almost everybody you you went against. Uh, went against. Purple belts, I trashed them. Like, purple belts ain't good. Pass guard, they supposed to be, the, they supposed to be pretty good. I pass guard. I'm laughing when I'm doing this, too. When I'm going against high level belts like purple or brown, if they're not that good, I'll start laughing. That'll make them anxious. Like, what the hell? I've been doing this for six, seven years, right. and I can't do nothing with this guy that's a white belt. Not now. I'm not gonna tell them that I, you know, I practice wrestling, I practice judo a little bit, I practice all this over here. I'm not gonna tell that. I'm just gonna be like, oh, oh I don't know nothing. You know None what I mean? Wiser, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't know nothing, man. And, but you get you better get, instruction that way. I yeah. found this out. Long yeah, time if you ago. don't tell you them nothing, better instruction. Yeah, you don't tell them nothing. Your background, you get. They give you the. They give you the right. They for some apparent reason they teach better. They do. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. They just teach better. If you don't tell them nothing, say I'm new, they they take the time out to teach you level one, level two, level three. They, it's like detail. When you tell you're them that threat. You're, you're not a threat. Facts. You're not a Facts. threat. You're not a threat. Like like coaches who are worried more about their reputation and they're more worried about their image. Like as a coach, you go, are you worried about how this person sees me? Like yeah. how do I look in their eyes? Like maybe yeah. they don't look at me as a master. Like right. this goes on through coaches' heads. So if you just show up as a white belt, you're like, hey, you know what? No worries. I'm no threat to you. Just show me what you got. You're going to absorb the material so much quicker. Mm-hmm. And it's better to play the fool anyways because yeah, I prefer it. all the rest is just ego. And yeah. the rest is just ego. You so know? I, I, And that usually happens. So the next time was – uh. Uh, what was it? The next time was at the new gym. Like she hit me too hard, and you know me, I match energy. Like you going heavy, I'm like, hey, bro, I don't, I don't discriminate. Like, okay, well, let me, let me throw a mean body shot, see what happens. Throw a mean body shot, heard her, heard a sound. Ugh. I'm like, oh, cool, I, I went too heavy. Well, let me, let me grapple it, and so I overhook, tied it down. She couldn't leave, so I'm just, you know, Randy Couture throwing those uppercuts, throwing them body hooks, and then all of a sudden she stopped fighting and made a scene like i can't fuck with him he, he he's always talking i'm like bro i mentally broke you i'm talking because i'm uh it's, it's not a physical game with you it's a mental game and that's what other guys as well up there it's 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 the it's the it's the mental side of it like they never win against a guy that can beat them not only beat them or hang with them but he can talk to them tell jokes laugh put on a smile because you know if, if you ever go to the gym it's only a few guys in there that smile not all of them you know, and like you said, it's an ego thing. I just break the ego. I know if I can break their ego, physically they go down. It's just simple as that. It's like it's like that movie It, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a monster, but if you imagine that monster as a doll or, or, or something lesser, it becomes that. Does that make sense? That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. You gotta be so calm. I got, and- I got one for both of you. I got Let's one for go. both of you, okay? And I want to do this, Sifu. I want to set this our first episode here on the Fighters Podcast. I want to set this tone because I want to ask every single one of our guests from here on, okay, this same question. But see, every time I ask it, I'm going to task you. You're going to have to answer it too, all right? So and I, I only ask it because Sifu is like, is like you, Zach. Like, y'all are real big on watching tape. Oh, That's yeah, I'm big I'm on real that. Big on. I, watch that every, yeah. I'm, I watch that every you day. You got to watch tape. So here's a question that I have for y'all. It can be a boxer. It can be a kickboxer. It can be wrestler as long as it's not wwe which i love wwe but we can't use them um it can be anybody that's in a real fight right it can be street beefs it can be anybody right your top five favorite fighters seafood you got to go first man it's like impossible it's like it's like <laughs> no but it is because it's you hard have, it's hard because you have to understand i'll tell you why every martial art i'll tell you why it's hard i can list like 20 but here tell you why it's hard it's hard for me because I watch karate. I watch uh, uh, Sanda, which is Chinese mm-hmm. kickboxing. Chinese mm-hmm. kickboxing. Yeah, I watch. I watch 
uh, 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 kickboxing. I watch Muay Thai. I watch just about every combat sport and even the traditional martial arts. So it's really hard for me to decide because I, you know, like I could name all the traditional martial artists I watch. I can name the street fighters I watch. I can, so it, 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 it's, it's hard. Like in, in the boxing world, uh, number one, you already mentioned it, Sugar Ray. That guy is incredible. Have, have, um, uh, you seen uh, Sugar Ray versus Thomas the Hitman Hearns? You mm-hmm. seen that match? Yep. That's like the most incredible thing you've ever seen. Thomas Hearns, that flicker jab that he had is unbelievable. That fight is unbelievable. And Sugar Ray went up against Roberto Duran. He went up against Thomas Hearns. He went up against all those guys. And I know he's widely, you know, I, I think even now he's super underrated. You know, number two, I have to go with my mentor, Kathy the Punisher Long, five-time world champion. She is incredible. The way she fights, she's an absolute monster. She's a beast. Uh, uh, I love George Foreman. I like, uh, I, uh, what's his name? That we just, uh, the, the kickboxing match that we, I was sharing with you uh, versus uh, Sagat. What's his name? We were just talking about it. Sugarfoot. Sugar, Sugarfoot, no, not, yes. Yeah, Sugarfoot. That's four, Sifu. You got yeah. one more. As Sugarfoot's one of my absolute favorite. And, uh, man, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'd put Tyson in there, but it's just it's just a cliche to say his name. Number five was cliche. Younger, if anybody wanted to know. He just – Tyson is slang for Younger. <laughs> <laughs> no, just because he's – just because – but, see, the problem with Tyson, the reason why I don't talk about him is because he's an anomaly. He's an anomaly. Yeah, he's, like, born every 20 years. Like, he, Ant, he, uh, like uh, not Anthony Joshua, like Deontay Wilder. They yeah. born, like, every 20, 40 it's, years. It, to me, it's almost ridiculous to say his name because – most of the times when you do uppercuts, it's a setup for a cross to knock out. This boy was just knocking everybody out with them. It's just, it's an anomaly. That's why I don't say his name because it's, it's cliche. I think like a Roy almost, Jones. Yeah. Right. Just, like, like, they, they, like where did Roy Jones get that skill? Like he just came man. onto the scene with I, almost like, and this guy, Roy was just, Jones is the biggest anomaly in boxing ever. He was like 18 years old. Just let me, let me say this about Roy Jones. And then let's get, let's get Zach's top five. Roy, this is what kills me about Roy Jones. Listen, Roy, if, if if I wish that at some point, and I could be wrong, I don't know Roy Jones, but this is from a spectator's point. A fan is also a fighter, right? So we got we got two points of views here, right? Well, from a fan's perspective, amazing. From a fighter's perspective, it was like almost he said, "Forget the basics. I'm just gonna box how I want to box. I'm not gonna practice a jab. That's, I'm not yeah, gonna practice a normal cross." I'm going a, I'm to a hook you from across the... It, that's that rooster. ...against everything. But what happened, in my point of view, because Roy Jones is, 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 you know, one of my favorite, not just fighters, but people, you know? And 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 what, the thing that kills me with Roy Jones is I'm like, damn, if, if I feel like had he applied those basics, his career would have really went on for a long time. I don't think he would be the same, though. You wouldn't know. No. You wouldn't. No, no, he no, no, wouldn't no. be the same Roy Jones if he no. got the basics. Nope. I think what made him special was not having them. Yep. Isn't it crazy? Right. Look nah, at Deontay right. Wilder. It's the same way. Hey, like, he, can, he can be anybody. <laughs> Boy, I can literally say, man, I'm, he can he can not work, do nothing and get off the couch and say, well, let me go be the heavyweight champion of the world. And they sign him up. All he got to do is hit you with this. Just hit but, you one uh, time. <laughs> that's where the conversation comes in, though. But it brings up a good point. It brings up a good point. Is it the boxer or is it the coach? Oh, yeah. Is it the boxer or or is it the coach? Five five top fighters, and then you got to answer Steve's question. Five, 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 five. Absolutely. I want to hear that. I'm interested. Oh, my top five? So my first will be uh, George Foreman. That's Mm. my first. Second, Beretta Duran. That's my second. Uh, Third, I got got, uh, Randy Couture. Oh, uh, I got Randy Couture on my third, fourth. You kids don't know who Randy Couture is. Go watch Randy Couture. You too young. You need to know who Randy Couture is. What's going on? Uh, that's my fourth. My fourth one, Henry Armstrong. Oh, uh, man. I got Henry, and then my my fifth fighter. I'm gonna say Benny the Jet. Yeah, Come man. on, yeah, Benny the Jet, man. Sure. 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 That's a good list, Sifu. Sifu. That was a good list. Each and one I, of those guys builds my whole style. If, oh man, I can tell because the, the the this is why I love asking people this question. 
it all I, I love asking fighters this question because it tells the story of their style i'll say it again when i watch you fight alexander shlamenko is one of my favorite fighters of all time i don't know how many people know about shlamenko but when he was in bellator he was whipping ass and taking names okay and he had this this style like peter yan where he's pressing 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 boom pressing pressing but in his defense like it was like he was a tin can you couldn't yeah. get anything and the only person from from russia that i've seen with that level of of defense and offense was peter yan for some reason you have this russian feel to your style you know <laughs> so that's what pulled me into it because that's always been my favorite style and i love it because i would never fight that style that's why I like to watch you do it. Oh, right? it actually, if you learn the Russian, the Soviet boxing style, you will do pretty damn good. If I can study it for about a year and master and get some of it down, anybody can. Like, yeah. I did the Cuban style, too. I'm more on the Cuban side, but that's just with agility and athleticism. But that Russian style, I, I, I looked at the punch mechanics and everything, and it, it made sense mixing boxing with natural movement. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We're burning toward the end of the interview here, right? And as we close out, what I want to do is I want to give you a chance to talk to the fight world. We don't know. We don't know who's going to have their eyes on this. We really don't know, right? If, if, if you have a message, if you have something coming up, if you have something that you're doing at Jupiter or that you're doing at Level Up that you want to share with the fight world, please, you have the floor, sir. Okay, so one thing I need to share with the whole fight world is consistency and volume beats talent and athleticism any day. And what we need to bring back is nervous system training. Look up nervous system training and bring that back because I think that's the best strength and conditioning for an MMA fighter, for a boxer, for anybody that's doing combat sports. Nervous system training. We need to bring that back. I'm not for sure why I left, but we need to bring that back. And always stick to consistency and volume. Never take a day off. Only if you're not hurt. But never take a day off. Train every day. It can be anything. It can be balance, stability, uh, endurance, just keep training consistently because at the end of the day, you will pass people up that are lazy, that are talented, but that's so talented that they don't have to train every day. You're going to eventually pass them up a couple months, right? If they train three days and you train six, you always three, you always going to be up front. They can always try to catch up, but at the end of the day, if they lack too long, you eventually pass them up. We watch this with uh, Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor was way better than him. What happened? Conor stopped training, and Dustin Poirier kept training. And we see that Dustin Poirier shh, went went to the top. You know what I mean? So consistency and volume beats everything. That's that's my biggest take. I, I want everybody to know that. Like to be great, you gotta be consistent. Don't take days off. If I work fifty five hours, five kids, and 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 I can do it every day. Anybody can. You know what I mean? You just got to make time. And everybody has time. I, I honestly say after this interview, I'm going to go to the gym now. Yep. Yep. This is this is great, man. Like I say, this is why I knew exactly who to reach out to. You know, there, there there's there's you know, I, I love following the, 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 uh, the sport of fighting, whether it's the UFC, Bellator, 1FC, whatever, whoever's putting on a fight. I want to see it. Right. But there's something special about the fighters who are fighting just to fight, you know, Sifu, right. you had a question and, 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 and I'm kind of leaning question. into it. I have a question. Well, we got about six minutes, five, six yeah. minutes left, but here's the thing. You had a question, but you also said something. A lot of people are fighting for glory. A lot of people mm -hmm. are fighting for fame. A lot of people mm -hmm. are fighting because they just want to put some shit on their channel. Fine, yep. whatever. But there's a lot of fighters out there that are not getting paid and they're doing it because they love it. They're doing it because it's because they they love it. It's it's fun. It's all of that. So that's gonna bleed into my next portion. Are you doing it as a career, or are you doing it because it is just? Are you trying to be a teacher one day? You trying to open up your gym one day, or is it just something you love? Number one. I just okay. Number two, is it the fighter or the coach? So it's actually for me, it's something I love. Uh, I love doing it. Doesn't matter. I don't have to teach. I don't have to get paid for it. I just love fighting because I love to. It, it, I love to be in that relaxed state of not worrying about nothing but what's in front of me. Right? Um, is it the coach 
or the fighter. It's actually the fighter. I'll be honest with you. I, I told him, I told everybody myself, I'm self-trained. Everything I got off of, I had to study for it and practice it every day to get how good, to get really good or get, uh, no, I say not really good, but above average, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's, that's my take. I prefer, it's fun. I prefer, I'm, str I'm not stressed out. I don't think about the world. I don't think about paying bills. I don't think about nothing when I'm fighting. And I, I prefer that if, if like, I prefer it. I don't have to think about, well, when I get to work, what equipment is going to break or what, what technician I going to clock in or what technician going to come to HR. I don't have to worry about none of that when I'm fighting. So I always enjoy that, that a feel of worryless. Like it's, it's a, like a big weight that's been taken off my, off my shoulders. And now I get to fight and, and talk to this guy and enjoy it for however wrongs. But as far as the coach or the fighter, it's actually the, the fighter. I'll be honest with you. It's not the coach. I don't need to be told what to do. I know what to do. You know what I mean? Like, it's the coach for me is to come up with a strategy. That's what I need the coach for to keep me consistent. Like I will take off like my, my, my routines of working out doesn't put me to failure. I mean, not even close. I barely sweat, but I work out four to three hours a day. So I never, I, I don't want to go to failure. So that coach will probably say, Hey Zach, yo, yo, yo failure. You're not going to failure. You're going to sit. What happens if you get a fight that's going to take you to that, that red point where that motor's fit to give out. You need to train that. I prefer him. I prefer that's when you need a coach to say, you're not training hard enough. You need to keep running. You know what I mean? That's when you need a coach. But as far as a fighter, the learning how to fight, you need yourself. You just got to study, sit down and study yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, the, the sport of boxing. I remember I remember when I first started learning the sport of boxing, Muay Thai or even kickboxing. It's really relatively easy to learn. It's not yeah. like it's not like a traditional martial arts where you're sitting there for 20 years yeah. like trying to study. It's like you can learn this relatively quickly and put it to the test. So uh, I love that. Last, I, I, and, and Coach uh, Troy, you know, you, 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 we got two minutes left. I, what I would love to hear about is what Zach wants, what his future plans are. If you got anything else, throw it in. There. So future plans for me? Hmm. Uh, to make 125 and, fly, uh, and fight uh, in uh, MMA Ferry for my uh, my new gym in San Antonio. Hopefully win that one. That's my future right now. This year, that's what I'm focusing on. You're going to do it. Oh, for You're sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. I feel and, sorry and, and, for the opponent. Hopefully he's I good. Do. Well, not really. No, not really. Because I'm going to be cheering for you, so I can't feel bad for him, right? That would, that no. would be a it would mess me up so, I, so I, i'm a good guy it will mess it would break my heart i'm really a good guy it would break my heart if if, if i had something personal against the guy and you beat him up right um yeah. but i tell you this when that fight is coming up you know i'll let y'all know absolutely because we got to do this again i was trying to i just didn't know when the street beast fight was and I, you remember see i'm like man i want to do the interview before he has this fight because that would be a good build up right you know, but um, we couldn't catch it. It's all good, you know. Um, but this time, I love to do a build up before and then bring that highlight, that knockout highlight. From but I feel like it's gonna be a submission because you've been knocking folks out. You gonna want to submit them? Oh, when I do MMA, I'm straight grappling. Yeah, I don't I even strike. It, so. Yeah, I pressure yeah. you, I uh, hand fight, and then clinch, then underhook, double unders, body lock, bring it to the ground, and I start working jujitsu out at that point. Like when I do MMA, I'm straight grappling. I don't, I don't, especially amateurs. Most amateurs in MMA suffer at wrestling and grappling. That's just a fact. When you get to those pro levels, that's when you start going against fighters that have black belts. But at that MMA, at that amateur level, ain't too many of them that got black belts. I'll tell you this, Zach, my friend, I really, really appreciate your time. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to take an extra second of your time because you're a hardworking man. And let me tell you this, this for 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 us is great because this is you know sifu is very humble you're very humble i'm a very humble martial artist you know all we want to do is is promote good fighters and a good fighter is not always what you see in the ring but it's the outside life and that's why i love muhammad ali right so yeah. i want to thank sifu also for inviting us here on his channel it's so much cool shit on, on iron martial arts when you all get a chance just just check out all the stuff on iron i was it's looking at it Kathy Long. I'm on there. You want to see somebody really handsome fight? I see you. I'm on there too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I tell you what, uh, Sifu, close us out. Thank you, Zach. We really appreciate it. I appreciate right, y'all for y'all putting me on. That's what's up. Zach, Zach uh dropped some really serious knowledge on us. You know, whether whether uh you know, rewatch the tape if you watch it one time, you're gonna hear him talk about 
calmness. You may talk, hear about fight personality. You're going to hear about uh, uh, using using everything that he's got. He's going to talk about the mental game. He's going to talk about the physical game. It's almost like it's funny because right before this interview, Coach Troy, I said, what's your favorite song before you get into a fight? And he said, chess boxing, right? Right? There it is. That's what it was all about, you know, and uh, that's what you brought to the table. So, you know, we got – Young Gun Fight Fitness here. Make sure to be able to check his channel out. He's going to be coming up. We got Zacchaeus Kennedy. You can find him under Zacchaeus Kennedy on Instagram and Facebook. Check him out. Follow Street Beefs. Follow his fights. Follow his future. He's going to be uh, sure to impress a lot of us. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. And uh, Zach, you're a beast, man. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. All right, brothers. Oos, appreciate it. All right. See you later.